Okay, Boo, ready to go? It's time to check out the most forsaken, horrifying blemishes on television history, deceitfully parading as sitcoms. Most of these sitcoms are either painfully shallow, offensive, dull as dishwater, or just plain annoying. So let's check out the top 10 worst sitcoms of all time. And just as much as ever, if you do like these sitcoms, that's great. It's just my usual silly personal opinion. So take this list with a pinch of salt. Also, pardon some of the poorer quality footage than usual. Some of these shows were only available on cassette tapes, so they're not exactly all Blu-ray quality. But anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Hell, honey, I'm home. Oh, this is just delightfully terrible. Hell, honey, I'm home! Could a sitcom possibly be more insensitive, more legally blind, than to make an entire sitcom starring Hitler? My apologies to anyone who does take offense from this sitcom. I don't blame you. I'm a very, very bad Hitler. <laughs> I mean, obviously the jokes are flat and unfunny, and the acting's hammier than a slice of bacon. But on top of all that, for some reason, Hitler sounds like he's from Brooklyn. Tonight you will make a schnitzel! What a joke! I mean, I know we don't all know Hitler's exact autobiography, but I thought it would be kind of obvious that Hitler's country of origin wasn't Brooklyn. How would the actor feel putting that on his resume? I played Hitler, but I didn't realize he had a German accent. <sighs> the story is basically Eva Braun, Hitler's wife, is angry at him for being too busy with, you know, the Holocaust and just that sort of thing. Not that that would possibly offend anyone, unsurprisingly. Hail Honey I'm Home was cancelled after one episode. I can't imagine why. And for number nine, whoops. I didn't just drop the mic, that's the actual name of the show. Where to start with whoops? Our hero Mark is an elementary school teacher. And while on his lunch break at the drive-thru, a nuclear bomb was dropped on his city. But he's perfectly okay, because he was in a Volvo. Wait, what? I know Volvos are safe, but really? A nuclear bomb? The Volvo proved even safer than advertised. Our hero Mark cheerily roams the desert in his Volvo. And despite the ruthless desolation of all life around him, it has this constant strangely happy music. Now a barren desert-like wasteland. I was in shock. You certainly sound it, Mark. I sounded more shocked last time I checked my gas bill. Fortunately, he eventually finds a block of land completely untouched by the atomic blast. Maybe they had Volvo windows? I don't know. He conveniently passes out here, and is greeted by our three other harrowingly bad actors. And our hero Mark has all the acting talent of a plank of wood, and the facial expressions to match it. I just don't get the tone of this show. Mass population genocide, and the loss of all of humanity's future, probably doesn't call for this cheerier soundtrack. I'm not saying it has to sound like a morgue, but Really? This music? Whoops is early on the list as it's not exactly mean-spirited. It's just monumentally stupid. And for number eight, Henry Danger. I've tried to avoid teen sitcoms for this list, but I just can't get past the sheer lack of any comedy whatsoever in this particular Nickelodeon sitcom. There we go. <laughs> I've seen more laughs in a documentary on plane crashes. Watch this. <laughs> Henry Danger won't rest until you are completely desensitized to the laugh track. The laugh track will go on after every single sentence, and for no reason. Why does he ask me? I would not have guessed that. Danger. Henry? Henry! She is saying his name. How is that even remotely classified as a joke? The teen actors, you can understand having a flat or overly awkward performance. They're probably inexperienced and almost certainly had a lousy director. 
But even the adults in Henry Danger sound blundering and annoying. Henry Hart lives in a town called Swellview, playing a hero called Kid Danger, who is the sidekick to Captain Man. At this point, I am convinced that the creator, Dan Schneider, was secretly replaced by Malaysian orangutans. This was the same guy who made Drake and Josh and iCarly. And those are among the best sitcoms Nick ever did. What the jeebus happened? Nick has had some painfully unfunny sitcoms over the years. But Henry Danger was easily among the absolute worst of all these. And the seventh worst sitcom is... Geico Caveman. Dude, your brother is drunk dialing again. A sitcom based off a car insurance ad. What could possibly go wrong? The entire joke is basically that the cavemen are living alongside us and are treated like minority stereotypes. The cavemen are just like us, except narcissistic and even more metrosexual. For some reason, all the actors give the kind of passionate enthusiasm you'd give while speaking at a funeral. My main question is, how do you make Neanderthal cavemen, creatures best known for spearing dinosaurs and bringing about the evolution of mankind, so agonizingly boring? The idea was stupid, the script was lousy, and each character seems to emanate more self-loathing than the last. I definitely recommend giving Geico Caveman a skip. And for number six, Man Up. Imagine if Adam Sandler made a sitcom. I know, I'm scared of the idea too. You can probably already imagine the premise. <laughs> probably about a bunch of grown men with the maturity of 13 year olds all trying to find their manhood. Or more likely their wives trying to find their manhood for them. It'd probably have some sort of childish battle of the sexes cliche too. Yep, unfortunately Man Up fits every one of these stereotypes. Man Up is like some sort of bizarre cross between Pixels and Hangover. These kind of shows bother me because they're not just insults to the actors playing them, they're insults to gamers and other enthusiasts. You can be mature and responsible and still be a gamer enthusiast. These guys aren't immature and annoying because they're gamers, they're immature and annoying because they're jerks. There's a big difference. We get classic terms like bromance and shouting contests of how man they are. Who's the man? You're the man! I'm the man! I'm the man! Man Up can't even seem to define what it thinks quote unquote manhood is. Even by the 13th and final episode, it just parades out its one dimensional stereotype characters and is void of any real charm or likability. Underneath, Man Up just feels like a flimsy pretense to make fun of modern men for being less quote unquote manly than they might have once been. And the fifth worst sitcom is Small Wonder. The producers of Small Wonder were burdened with the toughest task they'd ever face, making a functional sitcom out of an emotionless seven-year-old actor. Your mother threw them out for your father. Many producers would have given up there, but they were determined to get this train wreck of a comedy rolling. And so was born Small Wonder. Simply ask your small child actor to speak in a constantly monotone voice and to give a constantly vacant wooden expression because she's a robot. Brilliant. Now this may sound like the worst idea for a sitcom you have ever heard, but the creators of Small Wonder were convinced that this idea wouldn't get them fired. The problem with Small Wonder is that everyone's acting is so abysmal that I could never actually buy the idea that the father wasn't handing live wires to a seven-year-old girl and locking her in a closet every night. And if you didn't chuckle at a seven-year-old girl being treated like a robot, well, you have my condolences. As there's 95 more episodes where that came from, from this vacant, emotionless expression. The combination of terribly written jokes and horrible acting makes Small Wonder one of the most heinously bad sitcoms ever put to air. And for number four, Hannah Montana. I could talk all day about how insultingly stupid, damaging, and annoying this show is. But I've discussed it before in worse Disney shows, so I'll try and keep it brief. I'm sure there's many worse acting performances out there. Worse concepts, maybe worse dialogue, but jeebus, 
I just loathe Hannah Montana. Everything about this show just reeks of self-obsession, basing the whole series off the charming concept of an over-pampered teenager living the double life of an even more pampered tone-deaf pop singer. Fans will throw themselves at this self-entitled pop singer, worshipping the ground she walks on. It's just such an overindulgent teen fantasy romp that I feel revolted every time I watch it. Most people agree from her music videos. Miley Cyrus has become a monster in her adult years, transformed by Disney's most soul-crushingly awful sitcom. You know you've made a crappy sitcom when it emotionally shatters the actors involved in it. Throughout the series, Miley's acting seems to consist entirely of being sarcastic, trashy, shrugging her shoulders and cringing her face. This is her response to her fame, her friends, and just about every other badly acted situation that falls in front of her. And sadly, Miley Cyrus now carries the same pretentious attitude in her pop songs, horrifying the world in her trashy wake. Miley Cyrus now claims that she chopped up Hannah Montana and buried her in her backyard. Tell me this is an emotionally stable actor. At least Nickelodeon's Henry Danger is just plain stupid. Hannah Montana actively encourages kids to be over-entitled and sleazy. Hannah Montana is the mother of all garbage preteen sitcoms. And the third worst sitcom is... Here's the story of a lovely lady. The Brady Bunch. Door. Normally I can tolerate a little dim-witted, happy, chappy, nuclear family comedy, but Brady Bunch always left me feeling furious. It began this sickeningly sweet and sappy, insincere trend in sitcoms that we're still feeling today. There's something so passive-aggressive about all these characters that just seeps through their performances like this noxious poison. Just the thing you know who is doing for you know who. Your mother sucks cocks on you. <laughs> I've heard the dad of the Brady Bunch secretly despised this show, which might explain a bit of it. Just the way the family fights, then insincerely makes up. And it's all so agonizingly clean. You know no one's ever going to accidentally walk in on one of the teens trying to burp the worm. You know there's never going to be an actual serious problem like substance abuse. Everything is just so obnoxiously clean. Yet at the same time, the entire household feels like it's cracking at the seams with all the sickening chirpiness. All the kids have this strange glassy look in their eyes, as though they've been secretly replaced by robots. And all the time you're watching this agonizing display of insincerity, they've got this aggravating, overly shrill ear assault music playing in the background. This is a sitcom that created the eye roll and inspired a slew of horrifically sweet sitcoms in its wake. And the second worst sitcom is... Men, men, manly men, 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 men. Two and a half men. I know a lot of people do like this show, so keep in mind, it's just my usual personal opinion. But personally, I cannot think of another sitcom that is so incessantly unfunny, so overusing of the laugh track. So mean-spirited. If Hannah Montana's the mother of all trashy pre-teen sitcoms, Two and a Half Men is the mother of all trashy adult sitcoms. And on top of that, there's this constantly vengeful, spiteful feel to the show that has rubbed me the wrong way ever since I first watched it when I was 14. The story is that Alan and his son move in with Alan's brother Charlie, and 12 years of painfully unfunny dialogue ensue, with enough laugh tracks to send humans into a permanent state of madness. This is one of those few cases where I can tolerate the bad writing, but I cannot stand the characters the actors are playing in this show. Charlie in particular is always so slimy, self-absorbed, creepy, hedonistic, and stupid that I find it impossible to relate to him. I dislike him so much that I end up rooting for him to fail. Two and a Half Men is void of wit, intelligence, or any form of wordplay. The greatest mystery of this show is trying to figure out why a laugh track was used. I'll be right in to tuck you in. <laughs> 
For example, Charlie dies in season 8. This was actually because the actor Sheen decided that one million dollars per episode was not enough money. And he was having substance abuse issues at the time and making fun of the show's creator on TMZ. Classy guy. In response to this, we are given his funeral scene, where people continually stand up and say how much they hated the man, or talk about his sexual paraphilias, in front of Charlie's grieving mother. And never apologized for who he was. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Why can't we see the body? <laughs> and the laugh track goes wild. And all the visitors came along just to spit on his dead body. This is among the most toxic, unfunny, mean-spirited sitcom scenes I've ever seen. Although I wasn't a fan of any of the seasons, many fans of the show tended to agree that season 8 showed a huge drop in the quality of the show. Two and a Half Men was creepy, weirdly hedonistic, misogynistic, and exposed all the worst qualities of network television. And before we get to number one, I'd like to give some both honorable and dishonorable mentions. Cop Rock. Oh, this one's just too charming to hate. A police musical drama. These guys actually sing really well. Homeboys in Outer Space. Honestly, after watching Homeboys, I actually thought the actors were tolerable enough, and they actually seem to be trying. And one or two jokes are okay. Fuller House. I actually didn't mind the original Full House, despite getting a lot of recommendations for the list. I didn't find it funny, but I didn't find it insultingly unfunny either. My Mother, The Car. To be honest, I couldn't figure out why this series is so notoriously hated. Sure, the concept's campy, but come on, it was made in 1965. They even didn't have any laugh tracks. You don't know how refreshing that is. And with those said, here we go. And without a doubt, the number one worst sitcom is... Which means it's Friday, which means it's time for... Fred the Show. No other sitcom. There's not another sitcom out there I know that purposely hired a notoriously obnoxious YouTube personality, sped up their voice, and asked them to act as annoying as possible on network television. How do you top that? And to add a cherry onto this unsightly mound, they gave him another show called Marvin Marvin, which is just as brainlessly stupid and annoying and had only the pinnacle of fart jokes. I, I can't control my smelly button! If Hell could be a sitcom, I think Fred would be Satan's evil half-brother Brian. Yeah! <laughs> who eats kittens for breakfast and sells drugs to school children. Just all the stupid decisions Nickelodeon has made over the years. They just can't top this one. <laughs> just... Watching Fred gives me a headache within 35 seconds of starting the video. He stands for everything wrong with modern television. All the cheap production, all the obnoxious mugging of the camera, all the narcissistic personalities fueling these shows. Fred is just abysmal in every sense of the word. The story, well... Fred squeals around his school a bit, aggravating everyone, and for some reason never gets a punch in the face. He squeals at home a bit more, and by that point, my pounding headache was too severe for me to comprehend the rest of the 20 minute episode. I'll take the bland performance of Small Wonder over this any day. It even makes me long for the unfunny days of Henry Danger. Abysmal story, terrible script, and the most abominably annoying performance in sitcom history. I don't like this sitcom. It's bad. Don't watch it. The real quality sitcoms out there have learned from the past, and they know that good comedy doesn't need a laugh track. Shows like Modern Family know that if you treat the audience with intelligence, have good actors, well-written jokes, and interesting setups, they'll get laughs from the audience regardless of laugh track. When creators put a little extra time into their sitcoms, they can build a loyal following that may even be enjoying these sitcoms decades after their original release. Do you think I missed a particularly bad sitcom? If you can think of a particularly bad one that I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.